Hey, what is up guys? DRC3 here, back with another My Hero Ultra Impact video, and today we have some massive news about what is coming up in the game. Now, it is not the 1.5 year anniversary for JP just yet. That is going to be happening at the end of the month, so don't be confused when I go over these new characters and banners and events that are coming out in the game. This is not the anniversary itself. That will be happening sometime later in the month. Hopefully, we will be getting a limited character then. So you might want to pass on this banner. You might want to pull on it. I will be doing a separate video to talk about whether you should pass or pull on this banner. So make sure you check out that video after the fact. Okay, let's get into it. So the very first thing is we have a brand new recruit called No Holding Back Team Up Training Recruit. That is with present Mike and Aizawa. I'm going to assume it's right before what's happening now in season six of the anime where Aizawa and present Mike are working together. And so this should be a pretty cool original story. Hopefully when we look at the story for it, I am really excited. We're going to go over the new UR present Mike's kit as well as the new SR Aizawa's kit that comes with this banner here in a moment. But before that, let's go over all the other banners that are going to be coming out in the game. There's just so much happening in My Hero Ultra Impact right now. So the other next banner banner that is coming out in the game is the destruction type select recruit this will be happening on the 14th the present mic banner starts on the 12th two days before this one and then the banner that comes after that will be the ve tower banner which will start on the 25th i do not recommend summoning on this ve tower banner or this destruction type select recruit if you can help it because you're typically not going to get super great characters. The only reason you would summon on these two banners right here is if you are brand new to the game and need all the characters, then this might actually be beneficial to you. But if you've been playing the game for any amount of time recently, I would not spend on these two banners, especially with the chance of a limited character coming up sometime here in the next month, hopefully if we're lucky. All right, so now that those banners are out of the way, Let's get into the kits for Present Mike and Aizawa. Present Mike, we're going to do first the brand new UR character. He is an int type character. We've needed some strong int type characters, so that is going to be really good. And so green Present Mike, his plus ultra move is called DJ Punch. Hit deals 550% damage to a single opponent, deals 150% damage to all opponents so this is an attack all plus ultra this skill gains bullseye when the character's power is increased skill impact is increased by 30 percent when opponent's speed is decreased okay that sounds really interesting this is a really cool plus ultra i actually really like this so far his first action skill is called echo voice it deals 250 percent damage to all opponents love that this skill gains bullseye and increases in skill impact by 20 percent when character's power is increased decreases speed of all opponents by 15 percent for three turns love that decreasing speed of opponents is really really good for pvp a low cooldown time of four is also very very good his second action skill is called reverberations it increases plus ultra move skill impact of all allies by 40 percent for five turns and reduces damage received by 20 percent for three turns it's looking like a pro hero support to me. Cancels one temporary buff of all opponents with a medium chance, 35% of confusing the opponents for one turn. That is really good. Canceling one temporary buff of all opponents is amazing. And then having a medium chance of confusing, it sounds like all opponents, even though this action skill doesn't do damage, that is insane. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking he is actually going to be decent for both PvP and PvE purposes, being that he has the stun, being that he has the technical hits, uh, being that he deals with the speed of the opponents. Like He's probably going to be a pretty decent all-around unit so far, but let's take a look at his auto skills. His first auto skill is called Dwelling Soul. It increases skill impact of all pro hero allies by 20%. Sounding like a support to me. Also increases speed of all ally, all hero allies by 10%. That's pretty good. I wish that was a little bit higher on the speed, but that's okay because he's reducing speed with his action skill. So it makes it acceptable. His second auto skill is called voice hero. Increases character's power by 25% when plus ultra move skill impact is increased, which as we know, it probably will be, will be increased from his kits. Also increases plus ultra gauge of all allies by 10% when used in a second or later successfully executed skill chain. I'm not sure. I assume that means any action skill used in a second or later successfully executed skill chain will raise your plus ultra gauge and your allies. So that means both of his action skills become technical hits, question mark. I'm not sure if that's worded correctly. That's a little bit weird for an auto skill. 
Uh, to say that specifically, we'll have to see how that works out. But that right there could potentially make this character very, very good if that is the case that it makes both of his action skills technical hits. He will be amazing for VE Tower. He'll probably be pretty decent for PvP. He's looking like a decent all-around character. And then, of course, we have to talk about his arts. His arts are looking phenomenal. This one I really like. I'll click into it for you guys. He looks so mad. And if you've seen season six of the anime, this art looks actually fantastic. It looks so, so good. And then that's his awakened art, of course. I'll show you guys his unawakened art. His unawakened art is actually pretty cool too. They've done a great job with this UR character's arts. This is going to be a general pool character, of course. So I am surprised they put in this much work on his arts. And I will show you guys the plus ultra animation here in a second and we will react to it together. This is present Mike's plus ultra animation. Thanks to Hydros over on the ultra impact discord server. He has posted this on his YouTube channel. Go check him out if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and watch this. this will be my first time seeing it as well. I'll let you guys know my opinion and what I think of this. Okay. I like the music that he's put in. Obviously these plus ultras don't come with this music initially. Oh, oh. Why did he look surprised like he had just why did what why did he look surprised like he was surprised he did that much damage when he punched him oh no he's just mad he's just mad okay I saw that all wrong watch that again watch his face all right it's actually a mad present Mike this is this is kind of cool the only thing I wish that was a little bit different I wish that there is a background. You can see all the blackness in the background and stuff. That's what kind of marks to me is that they don't put in as much effort on some of these characters when they don't put in a custom background. Like the fantasy characters have a custom background. The ocean characters have a custom background, but this is still looking very, very cool. I love this animation because it reminds me so much of season six where Mike is just going off and it's actually makes him a, a more likable character than he has been in the past. So I am really excited. This makes me want to summon for him, even though he's a general pool unit. All right, on to the SR Aizawa. So we have like our third, I believe, maybe fourth. I think it's third SR Aizawa. I'd have to go back and look at the list of all the characters in the game for the global side. And his plus ultra move is called Binding Assault. It cancels two temporary buffs of a single opponent, deals 450% damage to a single opponent, medium chance of sealing the opponent's skills for three turns. So that's pretty decent chance of sealing for an SR character. Can't be too upset about that. His first action skill is called Manipulative Kick. It cancels two temporary buffs of a single opponent, deals 300% damage to a single opponent, medium chance of sealing the opponent's skills for two turns, which is really good. The bad side is he does have a cooldown time of five turns. It would be a little bit better if that was four or three. And I think that's why, of course, this character is an SR character compared to the UR Aizawa because this cooldown is not the greatest. Other than that, these two skills look very similar to the UR Yellow Aizawa. And then his second action skill is Binding Cloth. It cancels one temporary buff of a single opponent, deals 275% damage to the opponent, low chance of binding the opponent for two turns. So three chances to do status ailments is very good for an SR character, typically when you're gonna be using them in V Tower and stuff like that for scoring high. This looks decent so far. One more thing I'd like to see from him is technicals or crits or just stuff like that. Maybe plus ultra rays. We'll see in his auto skills here. His first auto skill is called angler type hero increases critical hit rate. There we go of all pro hero allies by 10%. 10% is massive, but it's still better than nothing. And it's all pro heroes on your team. Once per battle regenerates characters HP by 20% for two turns when HP is below 50%. And then his second auto skill is I don't like the media decreases critical hit rate of all opponents heroes by 20% shortens a characters action skill cooldown time by one when HP is below 50% up to three times. So he does shorten his own action skill cooldown time when he's below 50%, but that is kind of like a crappy threshold to have to do to get these cooldown times down right here. So I can see him being useful. It's he might be a little bit difficult to use in V tower with that cooldown time of five but I'm sure he will find his uses. And then once again, his arts, his arts are looking, this one actually looks pretty good for an awakened art. It looks different from the other Aizawa arts. I'm glad they didn't just recycle them. They do look different. So this is his awakened art right here. And I think that looks pretty dang decent. The next thing we're going to talk about is the new UR memory. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
The UR memory is called Fear the Mentor. It increases character's defense by 30% when equipped by a hero. That's pretty good. Reduces damage to character by 25% when covering allies. That's pretty good as well. And then also increases character's max HP by 20% if there are any pro heroes on the team. Now the thing is about this memory, I don't think there are a lot of great heroes. This is definitely a PvP memory, right? For increasing defense, uh, reducing damage, increasing max HP. Like it's all meant for a defensive PvP character. I don't think right now in the current meta of PvP, this is going to fit in on a ton of different defensive characters the way it stands now. Like sure, you could throw this, for example, on Fantasy Ida. And so when he's covering allies, he'll reduce damage. But what's the point of reducing damage when he has evasion? And when that evasion goes away, he's no longer covering allies, so he doesn't get that damage reduction. You know what I mean? So this would work well on like a Kirishima, for example, but people aren't really using Kirishima too much in the current meta. Maybe you could now. Maybe this opens up an avenue if you have this memory to use Kirishima, but at the same time, you got to realize that most PvP teams are focused around speed and speed memories. So if you use this memory, you're giving up a speed memory and it's just kind of like, so I don't know where this memory is going to be used, but the art looks very, very cool. A pivotal moment from season six, obviously. It looks like a good memory. I would be happy to get this. The SR memory is called You Won't Get In My Way, increases character skill impact by 25%. Decreases a single opponent's speed by 40% for three turns when the battle starts. One character's HP is below 50%, reduces damage to character by 25% for two turns, and shortens character's action skill cooldown time by one up to three times. Now, this memory, it could be useful. I don't see it being as useful as some of the other memories. Reducing action skill cooldown time is probably the best thing in this whole memory right here, but the way it sounds and the way it's worded, it sounds like you have to be below 50% health for it to reduce action skill cooldown time which once again is kind of just a pain in the butt and it doesn't help you too much in ve tower like you don't want to rely on that type of luck or rng but overall increasing your skill impact decreasing opponent's speed like they're okay fx is just not not a super great memory the art once again though i love the art I've, I've been a big fan of the art lately they're doing a really good job with it the next thing we need to talk about is the no holding back team up training. This is the actual story event that is going to happen at the same time as the banner. It comes out on the 12th. It is the normal type of story event that you would do with the shop where you buy things and stuff like that. However, they are adding one thing in that wasn't there before. So in the past, we have been used to having the monthly UR memory recruit tickets that are like 80,000 of the event points to buy really expensive tickets to buy. Well, not only are we getting these tickets, we are now getting a brand new SR recruit ticket that was not in the game before. And the cost of this bad boy, I'm just going to show you guys, is ridiculous. The cost of this bad boy is 70,000. 70, I hope they give us some easier way to grind because I have already been struggling with having the amount of stamina needed to get the UR ticket and then everything else in the shop, much less having basically two of these tickets, one for 80,000, one for 70,000, and then having to grind them out. That's going to be crazy. So I hope they introduce something that is going to give us either more stamina or give us uh, more metals or whatever we use to purchase these as we grind. We'll have to see what they do. But yeah, new SR ticket guaranteed. I mean, that's still kind of cool. Um, not really as worth that as the UR ticket, but you know, we'll take it. And then lastly, for this bit of news, like there's just so much news, guys. We have the beat stage that is coming out, a brand new VE tower. So they took a moment, they paused, they went back, they added double S difficulty for the flame and the critical stage. Now they're going back to making new VE towers and they have a brand new beat stage coming out. Futuring Jira, of course, probably present Mike and someone else, but I'm excited to see this new VE tower. I'm excited to see if they changed any of the stipulations. We've had six turn clears, three turn clears. They've added in some barriers and random things here and there that make it a little more difficult. I think they might do something unique with this because they had a little more time to develop this and work on it, but we will see when it comes out. That is all the updates in the game that are coming out, guys, starting around the 12th of November, 11th for us here in the United States, technically. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me some comments. I am still trying to reach 10,000 subscribers. We just recently hit 1,000, and I once again, I just got to say, thank you guys so much for making that happen. Peace.